What is going on guys? Welcome to your 31st HTML5 tutorial and in this lesson I'm going to be teaching you guys how to program your video player through JavaScript. So what HTML5 does is it gives us the capability to customize the programming for our video player to program it exactly how we want it to. It gives us all that control so since I have a bunch of free JavaScript tutorials might as well put that knowledge to use in order to program this baby. So right now we have all our HTML and CSS however if we go ahead and refresh this page and hit play Huh, nothing's working because even though we made a nice skin and we even uploaded the video properly we didn't give the user the control over how to play or stop or pause the video so we need to program that right now this is pretty much like having a VCR player with nothing inside just all the buttons on it so now what we need to do is we need to create a new file and what did I call mine bucky.javascript so I'm gonna go ahead and save this as bucky dot javascript I'm gonna scroll down I'm way too lazy to hit dot js so bucky dot javascript and save and now we can go ahead and start typing our javascript so again like I said if you guys are lost about what I'm about to do please 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 go watch my free javascript tutorials and that is gonna get you up to speed on all the programming of javascript so once you are a javascript expert you can come back here and follow along with this tutorial so those of you who have a background in JavaScript, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a function, and I spelled that wrong, function, and I'm going to say do first. Now I named this function do first because this is the very first function that's going to be called as soon as our website loads. Now what this function is going to be responsible for is pretty much making a bunch of variables that we're going to need later on as long as adding some event listeners and I'll tell you guys what an event listener is in like about 30 seconds. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to get a variable for the size of the progress bar. Now check it out our progress bar or our default bar rather is 600 pixels wide so let's go ahead and make a variable called bar size and set this equal to 600 now remember don't set it equal to 600 pixels because we're working with JavaScript now so kinda of change your mindset from CSS to JavaScript got it is your mind in the right place good good to go the next thing that we want to do is we need to reference a bunch of these HTML elements. Now we can't just say, okay, change the play button in JavaScript because it's going to be like, what the heck's a play button? So what we can do is JavaScript has a bunch of built-in ways that we can set variables equal to this play button and then we can change the variable and then it's going to be able to change the play button. And I'll show you how that's done. So the very first thing we need to reference is this movie or this video right here. So I'm just going to set this variable equal to my movie and how you reference HTML elements is this. Document which is pretty much your website itself, your HTML file and I'm going to hit get element by ID. Now this takes one parameter and it's the ID of whatever you're trying to reference. So the ID of this video is my movie. So now we can go ahead and plug this in and make sure you plug it in between single quotes my movie and now anytime you use this JavaScript variable my movie it's going to reference this video right here. So if you were to say something like my movie stop it would stop this video right here. Pretty cool. So, you know, that isn't like a valid function that we're going to be building, but that's just an example. So now what we want to do is we want to reference a bunch of different things in JavaScript. We need to reference this play button because we're going to be changing that through JavaScript. We're going to be referencing this default yellow bar and also that blue bar. So all of these things we need to reference in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and copy these. So copy paste 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 so we already have the video referenced next let's just go ahead and reference play button now I believe let me just make sure yep the ID for this is play button so let me just go ahead and reference it just like that now after this we need the default bar so go ahead and copy that ID and I'm just gonna go ahead and name this bar because I don't feel like typing default all the time and now the last thing is that progress bar now by default this doesn't show up at all but we're gonna be changing that through JavaScript now I'm just gonna be naming this progress bar 
So again, right now if we save this, we have four variables. We actually have five, but you know, we aren't really referencing any elements with this. This is just a number. We have my movie, which represents this movie right here. We have the variable play button, which represents this little button. We have the variable bar, which represents this blank yellow bar. And we have a progress bar. Now, we can't see it right now, but that's that blue bar we saw in the last tutorial that's going to be um, pretty much growing, or the width of that progress bar is going to be changing as our video is playing. Now, we can move on to event listeners. Now, what the heck is an event listener? An event is pretty much an action caused by the user. The user can do a bunch of stuff to your website. He can drag stuff around, he can click buttons, he can, you know, delete or excuse me, highlight text. Any of those actions are considered events. For example, a click, a drag, those are all events in JavaScript. So what an event listener is, is it's pretty much a bit of code that waits for an event to happen. For example, we can have an event listener waiting for someone to click this button. Now whenever they click that button, we can either call a function or take them to another website or submit a form. Those are called event listener, pretty much a little bit of code that we say, okay, wait for event or an event to happen. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing this video when they hit this play button and we're also going to be changing where the video plays depending on where they click this default bar. So we're going to be adding an event listener to this play button and also an event listener to this progress bar right here. So again, one for this one, one for this one. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now, in order to add event listeners, you first write which element you want to wait to listen to. So, since we're going to wait till they click that play button, we need to reference play button just like that. Now, in order to add the actual event listener function, just go ahead and add a dot, add event listener. And I always forget this extra E, so make sure I have it right. So event listener is a function that's already built into JavaScript or you know your browser or whatever you want to call it it's already built into your computer now it takes three arguments in order to work the first function is there are different types of events like I talked about there's click drag um, you know this one is just gonna be a simple click so we're pretty much saying okay whenever they click the play button what do we want to happen? Well, that's going to be our second argument. We're going to make a function in the next tutorial called play or pause. And the third argument is, I'm not even going to explain this. It isn't important and I'm running out of time. But just go ahead and always put it as false and let us, unless I tell you guys otherwise. So pretty much this is how you add an event listener to any element on your website. First, you need to reference the element through this get element by ID. And now, once you have a variable that represents that element, you can add an event listener to it. And now, whenever they click that play button, a function called play or pause is going to occur. And you're saying, okay, where is this play or pause function? Where we're actually going to be making that in the next tutorial. Now, like I said, we have an event listener for this play button. Now let's make one for this default bar. So remember, the bar, the default bar, I just called the variable bar. So let's go ahead and copy that. Add event listener. Now, for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and make a function called clicked bar. So whenever they click the play button, this function is going to be called. And whenever they click the default bar, this function is going to be called. Now, in the next tutorial, we have to build both of these functions as well as make another function to change the size of the progress bar. So we have a lot of programming to do. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.